Hi, welcome to this week's Tutorial Tuesday. I'm Lisa Gollum and I will be your teacher tonight. And I'm really happy that you're here in Rock Studio with me with for part two of Peaceful Mountain because last Tuesday, if you remember, we painted this beautiful sky. Just a nice beautiful sky with some clouds. There's a million ways to paint a sky a million different colors that we could have put in it. I made it fairly basic, but taught you kind of how to blend the clouds and that kind of thing. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed last week. Uh, if you didn't do last week, don't worry. You can still learn to paint water and learn to paint mountains. Just paint some blue in the background and you'd be good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a body of water on just on the bottom quarter or so of our canvas. So for this um, part of the tutorial, I did want to let you know that we will be using a palette knife. Um, if you've uh, been on my tutorials before, you will notice that I do have an Amazon wish list that I share in the, in the description of the video where you can find a link to get the supplies you need and there will be a knife in those supplies. There really isn't a good alternative. You can try doing it with a credit, an old credit card, not a new credit card, but I have seen people try it with credit cards. Maybe I should do a credit card tutorial a new way to use your credit card. <laughs> that would be a good one. Uh, but I, you know, I use it enough, <laughs> so it's all good. So anyway, we will be using this to create the mountains and a little bit with the water as well. But first, we're just gonna use Papa Bear. Now, if you've been into tutorials with me, you know Papa Bear is like a one inch flat brush, like so. But any flat brush will do, any size flat brush at all. Okay, so, in nature, when there's water and sky, the water will reflect the exact same colors of the sky, except typically a little darker. Aha! Uh -huh. I have to take a sip of wine just for one second. I'm thirsty. <sighs> so I am noticing a drop of paint in my wine. Uh-oh. Do you think it'll kill me? Okay, so first thing I want to do is define my horizon. Now, when you're going to paint mountains in the back, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. I'm aiming for relatively straight. One hint for, for, for painting a fairly straight line is to move quicker. So if you try too hard and you're white knuckling your paintbrush and you're trying to get a straight line, it's going to go wonky. But if you just go, your arm knows how to do that motion. Just, just make sure you don't do this motion. <laughs> Nice and straight. All right, so like I say, about a quarter of the way. So I'm gonna put my horizon about here, you know, straight across. Easy peasy. <laughs> and then of course, second swipe. So sometimes I just literally sit here and swipe back and forth. And as you can see, nice and fast. So you're gonna have to reload your brush to get it to go on there, but we're just kind of defining it. And you're gonna want to make your strokes relatively straight if you can. And that is because something about gravity and water, unless it's really tumultuous water, unless it's really wavy, windy, if it's fairly still water, you're gonna see a lot of reflections that kind of glint across the water in a horizontal movement. So one of the keys to making something look like water is to get that vibe of the nice straight line. I'm gonna spray my canvas with a little bit of water, not too much, just a few little spritzes, because as you can see, that just loosens things up and makes it easier to get the paint on the canvas. But you still need enough paint in your brush. It can't be all water. Otherwise it doesn't bond with the, with the canvas very well. So really the hint with water is just to do lots of multiple shades of the colors that are in the sky. And I'm gonna lose my boa because for some reason it got really hot down here. It's probably the wine. And I'm now I'm gonna do some pure blue. Remember, we're gonna create mountains in the background too. So the very back, you're probably not gonna see the lines clearly. Here we go. A little more pure blue. 
Oh, isn't that yummy? And it's just, see, I'm not trying very hard, am I? I'm not thinking too much. I'm just putting color on top of color, kind of in a random way. And I accidentally got my brush in some white and isn't it glorious? So it's lots of happy accidents happen when you paint. And you gotta just learn to embrace them. Things that you don't do on purpose are usually the best things. So instead of brushing side to side like you normally would with a brush, I'm gonna turn it so that it makes a horizontal line. And I'm going to put it in pure white, and I call this the horizontal orientation. And I'm just gonna put some, and again, I'm going quick because I want, I want those lines to be relatively straight and clean. And I'm loading the brush often because I want some pure whites. There. Now, remember I said that the water is often darker than the sky? So I mixed a little bit of a gray, but now I'm going to make sure I put a little blue in it. And that's because with all the blue water, you don't want the gray to be too black and white looking. In fact, just a tidbit for you in nature, you very rarely see like a gray that would not have a shade of color underneath, like color undertones to it. So this is kind of a blue gray. I'm gonna put a little more blue in it actually. It's kind of like a dusty gray, dusty blue gray. Then I gotta make sure the horizon for sure is darker. Then I'm just gonna bring some gray I don't want to put gray on top of everything because there's lots of really beautiful things happening in my water. So I'm just kind of decorating the water with some, some gray. Now, we're gonna break out our palette knife. Now, when you hold a palette knife, you hold it like it's gonna be a scoop, scoop out some food and go hum, like a fork, like you're gonna scoop, except you don't scoop the paint with the knife. You, pull it towards you in the paint. So I'm gonna show you on the other camera. So with my knife held like this, you put it in the pile you want, which in this case is white, and you kind of push down on the white. And the edge of the knife that's furthest from your face is the one that has the paint on it, as you can see. So I'm just pulling to get some paint on the bottom of my knife. Don't really want paint on the top, but if it gets some on the top, it's okay. So with that paint in the bottom of my knife, holding it like this, I'm gonna use this knife to create some little white caps. So I like kind of them to create interest. So you're basically just lightly touching, keeping your knife relatively horizontal, and just putting some, some white caps. And you, you'll get used to like, you're not holding it flat again, putting it flat against the canvas and you're not putting it like totally 90 degrees from the, on the canvas. It's kind of a 45 degree angle. So you can get that paint off. And you're gonna want some areas that, that have more white. You don't want it to look like there's just stripes in the water and you're gonna have to reload. So there's always, always tempting to kind of make like things that, things that are kind of symmetrical and you really don't want to do that. So I'm just kind of making some random white horizontal highlights. I often put them in kind of groups. And if you pull down on the knife a little bit, it just creates a bigger wave. <laughs> like, like so. Cool, eh? Whoop. Make sure a few places I go all the way to the edge. There's your lovely ocean. Fini. Now all we have to do are the mountains. So there's a little bit of a knack to it and you can kind of play with it. And, and my hope too is that if you go through a tutorial once and you kind of get it, 
but you're like, oh, that's really kind of cool, do it again. Because sometimes if you do the exact same thing, especially if you do it soon after, you will be incredibly improved the second time. Incredibly improved, guaranteed. Because the first time you try a new thing, it's like, hey? But then you kind of work into, you kind of get it, but you just kind of get it and you're done. But if you do it again, the second time, or even the third time for heaven's sakes, <laughs> go for it. Because every time you do it, it'll get better. So that's the one little tidbit of wisdom on the painting front for you for today. That's a pinky gray, that's a bluey gray, and that's a lighter gray. That's a good starting point to make my mountains. So I'm just gonna wipe my knife on my paper towel and set it aside for a moment. And we're gonna use Papa Bear to design our mountain range. Sometimes mountains can be kind of squarish and sort of jagged. Papa Bear is good at that because he provides us with a nice little line as well as a little square edge so you can get kind of jagged rocks. So I'm going to choose the blue gray. I'm going to get Papa Bear saturated in that blue gray. So I'm just going to design and I don't want the mountains to be too huge but I'm just kind of going to make like a bit of a jagged mountain range back here. Eh, you can fill them in or not, because you can always fill them in in a few minutes. So either way, we're just doing the first lay down of color. So there's our first pass with the mountain range. Oh, I think that's beautiful. Good start. All right, so now I am going to, before I take my brush, I'm just gonna take some of the lighter gray. I did not wash Papa Bear. Just putting some of that lighter gray just on the top and I might even add a little more white. I want it to be noticeable. So just now have some white on the end of that brush. And I'm just gonna like highlight a little bit some of those crags at the top of the mountain. You'll notice just, just use that squareness of the brush to kind of make random highlight. It's kind of noticeable in the mountains. So you'll notice that, I mean, I didn't cover all the dark gray, but I covered a lot of it. And we're gonna use a darker gray next. So now, third step, I'm just gonna put my brush straight in that, in some of that black on the end. I, again, I did not wash. So it'll automatically blend till I get like kind of a really dark gray. Now, this nice, square dark gray. I'm just going to put kind of along the bottom of the mountains and work it into that up a little bit. And I'm not really thinking too hard. I'm just kind of putting, putting a little darkness on the bottom. Mountains can have various shapes and we're not done yet. We're gonna use knives on the mountains in a few minutes. I want some dark highlights kind of behind this mountain. So kind of the rule of thumb is if this mountain's in front, this mountain would be a little darker behind. 
This is a little more advanced, so don't worry if you don't get this perfectly. We're just, and I'm not getting it perfectly either because I'm just kind of doing it in a hurry. We're just kind of getting the basic gist of light and dark on the mountains. It's almost like you're creating fun shapes. All right. And just trying to kind of blend them in. Of course, my paint is really. All right. So you'll notice when you look at these mountains, they're starting to look a little more real. And that's simply because there's three shades of gray. So not 50 shades of gray. No, three. We don't need any of that 50 shade stuff. So, but in nature, if you're painting something, there needs to be at least, in my opinion, three shades of that, of a color. And even if you paint them in weird spots, just the fact that you kind of laid three shades down together will trick the eye of the viewer into seeing it as a 3D object. Just a hint, another one for you. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is put some shadows on the water of the mountains. For shadows, I'm gonna use Papa Bear again. Detecting a theme, Papa's working really hard today. Okay, so the trick with doing shadows is to mix water in the paint, because guess what? Water in the paint makes it more transparent. So the trick is you want the paint watery enough to look transparent, but not so watery that it'll drip vertically down your canvas, because that's not okay. So I'm gonna put my Papa Bear in my water, I'm gonna drag him on the side, and I'm going to grab that same bluey gray, and I'm just kind of putting him back and forth, mixing some of that paint onto my brush. And then instead of trying to draw the mountain shapes underneath as a reflection, I'm actually just gonna kind of using him in the horizontal orientation and starting on the left, I'm just going to create some horizontal lines to give the illusion of shadow. Now, before I take a knife to that, I am noticing that the bottom base of the mountains would be really shadowy because the light's in the sky and there's always shadow near the, near the bottom of the ground. So I'm gonna add just another one little bit of darks, kind of at the base of the mountain, just sort of willy nilly. And just bearing with me for a minute, I'm going to blend that a bit with my fingers. See how that really sets those mountains apart. So I'm just coming up from my horizon point a little bit with some darks. And then just rubbing them in gently where the lines meet. So there would be, so any time there's a mountain in front of another mountain, you would get some dark, craggy spots. And you'll notice that I like my using my fingers to blend. It's just a habit of mine. You can blend it up with the brush as well. But sometimes brushes create lines that I, that I don't always like. I know I'm being a little fussy. <laughs> it's hard for me to resist being a little bit fussy once in a while. <laughs> it's like every little crag and every little dark spot just adds more dimension to your mountains. OK, 
Okay, so last step in this painting, we are going to use our knives. Now, I did grab a smaller knife, but your knife would have been smaller anyway, because the one I used last time was extra big. So this is probably similar to the size that you have in if you bought the dollar store ones or the one on Amazon. And all I'm gonna do, if you wanna watch with no paint on here at all, I'm just going to take the point of my knife and just bring down some edges. So again, you hold it like you would scoop in, scoop food into your, right? When you're hungry. So you would hold it like that, but then you will get the paint on the back edge by pushing it like this on your palette to get the paint under there. Then you're going to place the knife. In fact, I probably would just put paint on the top little bit of the knife. You can kind of control. And you would just place that knife on the edge of a mountain and just very gently push and pull downwards and then up. So you're not pushing really hard like this. You're not putting it right against the canvas. You're leaving it at about a 45 degree angle-ish. You're gonna kind of go, as the paint gets used up, you can make the angle smaller to get more paint off the back. But you're just gonna put some highlights and different crags on the tops with the knife. And if you want to keep, to watch me do this before you try it, feel free. Hopefully you can see well enough. So first I'm going to take some of this pinky, pinky gray that we mixed before. And I'm just going to put it on some of the mountains, just like this. And you're literally not gonna be bothered with what it's gonna look like you're just doing some really cool shapes with the paint. You're, gonna, you're probably asking, well, if we're gonna do this, why did we bother painting the mountains in the first place? Well, because it's like an underpainting, right? You don't have to put these all in the same orientation. You can like change it up a little bit. If you go outside the lines a bit, you just make an extra mountain crag there. It's all good. And play but you really can't get this wrong because honestly it's just going to add depth and dimension to your mountains which is why I didn't I helped you do the underpainting first because that will help it look even more 3D so now this is a brighter color if I've got paint all the way along and I just want paint on the tip I will literally just wipe it off on the bottom bit on my towel or even on wipe it along the side of your palette to get the paint just in the top little bit and yeah, you can now put some lighter colors along the top. And the lighter you touch, the more kind of cool little effects you will get, as you've just noticed, on the top edge of those mountain, uh, mountain peak. And this is when you remember to step, step back a little bit because you can always see it better when you're further away. I'd say it's good, except I want a little more color on my mountains. Even though I put magenta and blue in those grays, they're still looking awfully gray to me. Now, literally all I'm going to do is to remember that we used to use Mama Bear, if I can find her. <laughs> Way back in the day when we used a, a round brush. Mama Bear, the medium round brush. It's got a little pink in it, but I don't mind that. She'll be a little pink. I am going to just put her in some pure black because the last thing I do with the painting is to look at it and say, okay, does it need more darks or does it need more lights? This painting absolutely does not need more lights. It's got lots of white, lots of light in the sky and the water and the, but it needs a little more pop of, you know how when you're editing photos and it asks you to, to put more pop or more contrast, this is what we're doing, except with a paintbrush instead of a program. So I am just going to, with Mama, just again, add a little more, it's almost like scrumbling. I didn't put too much 
paint on my brush. I'm just gonna add a little bit of more careful areas of black. Now guess what? I need a little more shadow in the lake or the mount or the ocean, whichever you want to call it. It's just not doing it for me. So I'm gonna add a mama bear full of water into that. What is used to be black for me is now dark gray. Either one works and just work some more drastic shadows. And you don't even have to go in all of the shadows, just even just in some of them. And I just actually used Mama Bear because you can get some lines with Mama pretty easy too. There we go. And you notice how that really makes, helps it pop, darkening the mountain and the shadows just a little bit. Bringing out the pop. I do wish I could blend it a bit, but because my, my water is dry, it's sitting on top rather than blending in. And that's okay. And when it starts dragging on that dry paint and doesn't want to go on, I add a little bit of water into the paint and back on. Just so you know, if you find that you really didn't like the result you got with this painting, try it again. Every time you do it, you'll be like, oh, that's what she meant. It'll, it'll start to click. And also, um, I am I fairly new at teaching on video. Um, I'm pretty good teaching in person, but it's a lot harder, to be honest, when there's no one in front of you. So you can't correct things or suggest things specific to that person's painting. You just have to paint your painting and try and explain what you're doing. And just so you know, I'm an intuitive artist, not highly trained or intellectual about what I do. So I just know what to do. And so sometimes it's a challenge for me. <laughs> so um, again, if I'm not clear ever, forgive me. And we're gonna just go through this together and do more and more paintings and it's all gonna be great. So um, I do want to, uh, to, to thank you ever, ever so much for hanging with me. <laughs> it's great that you're here. And I, I mean, I couldn't do this if people didn't watch. I just hope you're having a great week and that you're proud of the painting you created. I'm gonna call mine Peaceful Mountains, just cause it makes me feel so peaceful. It's me, Lisa Gollum, signing off. Thanks so much for hanging out with me in my studio. Feel free to connect with me in the comments or check out my social media sites below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, show those like and subscribe buttons some love. See you next Tuesday.